this man, this chaps of Toriko, it was definitely worth the wait, man. Like, the eight kings are just a pile of savages. Oh, bear in mind we didn't get to see all of them in this chapter. But either way, Toriko chapter 377, it just confirmed how, like, first of all, it kind of confirmed how screwed Acacia is. And it just showed how unbelievably strong the eight kings are. Bambina, Well King Moon, freaking Sky Dead. This is, oh my goodness, man. Ah, uh, the hype is real, people, man. Like, Mr. Toshi is on fire. This is what I love about Toriko. I love the action. I love the hype. The, just the, the massive DC. The destructive capability that these guys can actually um, express is unbelievable. Like, for a second, I got scared because, of, of course, my guy Bambina, the eye pops out and everything and the case she goes, and it's just like, yo, Bambina can't be out, but he doesn't, he just unleashes his pure form. And it's like, it's hilarious as well because Acacia just seems salty, literally. This is what Acacia seems like, like, lots of strong people are coming and they're putting Acacia in his place and Acacia just, he, he's not liking it. And then, so Acacia comes in and he gets angry and punches Bambina. Bambina comes back, grabs onto him and then shows him a real punch and that's what I was talking about. This is why I love Bambina. Because even though Bambina, he's like the problem child of the, the um the, the problem child of the eight kings, always you know just joking about all that kind of stuff. When it comes to seriousness, he'll get down, and it's just like, oh man, honestly, Acacia, I fear I fear for Acacia, I really do. Now, on on a one on one base, on a one v one kind of basis, I do think Acacia's strong enough to defeat some of the eight kings. But if all eight kings are going at him, Acacia could not defeat them. Neo's probably, I, I, actually not even Neo himself, because if you think about it, in the previous chapter, when freaking Jack and King Darius just activated that extra dimensional laser, Neo couldn't even fully consume the whole thing of that. So there are limits to Neo and Acacia, and this is awesome, because when, as, when Neo first got introduced, we were believing him, like, he, we, we believed, we were wondering, how is he going to get defeated? We believed him to be, like, the strongest thing ever, like, the man... Eight stars defeated my man Don Slime, rest in peace. But like, he was defeating all these guys, freaking Acacia destroyed Jiro, man. Like, we were wondering, when's this guy gonna get defeated? How's this guy gonna get defeated? And over these chapters, we've been seeing Blue come in, we've been seeing Horse King Heracles, all these people doing their damage, and it shows us that this guy can be put in the ground, and that's what I'm happy about. Now, in this chapter, and the thing that I'm hyped the most has to be Sky Deer. Now, Sky Deer is the most interesting. He's the most mysterious eight king, in my opinion. Now, the I, I feel like the, the different characteristics with the eight kings. There's like obviously the one that you're hyped the most for, the one that you're interested in the most, the one that you generally like the most. Now, Sky Deer, I feel like that's the mis the most mysterious one because we don't really know anything about Sky Deer. All the narrator, all Mr. Torchy has told us is just like, um, all we know is of Sky Deer is that Sky Deer has animals which are of around four thousand to five thousand capture level, so they're coming near to the eight king territory. Um, even above, they're above the seven beasts, and um, Sky Deer has all of these eight, all of these, deer, all of these uh, beasts on him, and they exist there just so that Sky Deer doesn't get enraged, just so he doesn't get angry. Now that is just phenomenal in my opinion, because I'm just wondering, like, hang on, I want to see Sky Deer in action. We obviously do see some of Sky Deer in this chapter with the whole bat channel. I don't believe that's just one of his main capabilities. I want to see more. I need to see more abilities of Sky Day because Sky Day looks awesome, man. Like, his ability, we find out in this chapter that he can, he seems to manipulate the Bat Channel. And that seems pretty self explanatory due to obviously his recipe being, you know, um, meat. But, um, he can control the Bat Channel to a degree where instead of slowing down time, he speeds up time. And that makes, that, uh, that makes sense now because when we saw the chapter when all parts of Neo, when those monsters, they were going apart, as soon as he entered Sky, the, the forest, he just got vanished in a second. It seemed like a million years passed in a second or something. I can't remember what was um, accurately stated, but it was something hacks, man. I was just like, yo, this monster is unbelievable. I want to see Sky Day in rage. Just imagine that. And you also need to understand, Sky Day is just massive. Like, the creature is ginormous. I can't wait to... Uh, I'm, I just want to see more Sky Day, in my opinion. Now, we get to see a bit of Welking Moon in this chapter. And it's, the chapter starts off with Welking Moon. 
And I'm, in, I'm really interested in World King Moon because then again, that's one of the Eight Kings which is obviously mysterious as well. And I feel like we know nothing about World King Moon. Like, or only that, only all we know is that he's the most powerfulest. He can, you know, freaking consume light itself. So I really want to see more of it. And I just, I, I really give, pro I, I gotta give props to Mr. Toshi of the artwork. Because in this, in general, Toriko's artwork is, I love it. Now, when he really puts in, when those action scenes, like you see those widespread pages, and we're seeing freaking Acacia going out with that gourmet hammer, that was beautiful. I bit, ah, the artwork was so awesome. It really built up the tension and the suspense to when he comes crashing down on Welkin Mooning. You just see, well, the thing is, you can't understand. When Acacia put damage on Bambina, Bambina's eye popped out. When Acacia puts damage on Welkin Moon, well, King Moon's skin just comes off like his shell. So, well, King Moon, you can tell that you could you could um say that he's not even damaged at this point in time, and that is just hype, man. That is just crazy. I'm so excited. <sighs> well, King Moon is just awesome. I'm really I'm really loving his design right now. Um, when he's when he hasn't got the the meteorite kind of shell, because all before that, I was always wondering. What does Working Moon really look like? Because all we've seen him before it looks like just a massive circle, pretty much. Or in some, or you see it on some side on pictures, you see him looking like an actual, you know, um, beast. So I really do like what he looks like now. He's cut, he's all white. He looks really awesome. He looks like a proper whale. So I'm, I'm really excited to see more of Working Moon. Um, Bambino is just awesome in this chapter. Now, in case you're in case you this chapter kind of confirmed. It didn't confirm, but it, we really got a lot, a lot of um. Uh, exposition on Acacia's abilities, and I've been Acacia is really strong. Now that kind of sounds silly because you're kind of thinking, well, of of course, like of course, Sam um, Acacia is you know the gourmet leader. He started the whole gourmet kind of um, legacy that is right now. Um, but I'm saying in terms of like he's he's he levels above the four heavenly kings right now, and that's why at the end of this chapter it says Toriko must eat God. See, this is what I feel like. I don't. Toriko cannot defeat Acacia right now, let alone Neo, um, before he consumes God. I believe that when Tori you need because when Toriko eats God and center, that's when Red's um power is truly um his his power is truly released. Now we don't really know the full course for blue. All we know is that blue cells is the same as the nitros, and therefore I believe another universe from the blue universe possibly. So I'm not really sure what Mr. Toshi's doing right now. I'm not really sure what's going to happen in the future because I know a lot of people are thinking, yeah, White's got the third demon's going to come out and just destroy Keisha. And I would like, I would love to see that too. But you just need to understand as well. Um, the third demon, like, how we, if it comes out, it's, it's going to be a wrap for Toriko. So maybe, obviously, Toriko eating God in Center is going to. Uh, um, strengthen his body to a degree where, you know, the third demon can po possibly come out, and that's when maybe he'll be on equal terms with, um, Acacia and Neo, but I still feel like Acacia and Neo's not fighting at 100% right now. I, I understand that he's, he's highly salty right now, he's extremely angry right now, but I feel like there's, he can do more right now. So, um, he's putting Neo in crypto bio cryptostasis, I believe, cryptobiostasis, so he, part of him he is a, like, you could say suspended animation, you could, you could say that, um, just to pres uh, preserve Neo, because if he doesn't, Neo would be dead, so that's, re it puts a bit of, you know, like, it gets you a bit excited, because it's just like, Neo can be killed, and one of the eight kings has the power to do that, so that is really, um, awesome to find that out, so this chapter, I loved it, but I gotta talk about Tepai for a second, because, I hope Tepai's not dying, man. I just don't want the whole Jiro family to die. And I said this in my other review. Where the hell is Jiro's son? Where is he? Like, show us, man. Mr. Toshi, please, please show um, Jiro's son, Tepai's dad. Because um, if Tepai's going to die as well, it's going to be like the whole family's just getting kicked off. And I don't want Tepai to die. And I was a little bit shocked because I assumed that Tepai would have been strong enough to fight these Blue Nitro. Because I always saw it as Tepai being a bit stronger than Toriko. And Toriko was kind of able, or well, Toriko's gourmet demons were able to fight uh, the Nitro. So I always thought Tepai would have been, you know, well equipped um, to defeat these guys. Not maybe two against one, but maybe at least one. Or, oh, like, just judging by how strong Jiro is, I was, I was assuming that Tepai would at least have not the same amount of strength, but similar. Um, but we need to understand that these Nitros are strong, because when, when uh, the pair, the big guy, he was fighting uh, Jiro, like, he did cause Jiro some pain. So, 
We'll just have to see what happens in the next chapter. Sorry, girl, 378. Now, she's going to me, so I'm turning forward to comment below what you thought of this chapter. If you like anything that I had to say, please give me a like. That would be greatly appreciated. Let's continue the discussion down below. I'll drop a couple of thoughts, a couple of more thoughts in the description. And I'll see you next week for that greatness. Shinigami-san.